Hi, Rama. It's week 28, day five of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in Psalms uh, 50, 53, and 55. Uh, we're kind of skipping a few because we've used some of these other psalms already in our reading plan as we were going through the life of David. Some of those psalms, uh, we could tell from the uh, subscription there that, uh, that they were related to a certain event in David's life. And so we read those psalms with those events. And so now we're just working our way through the psalms. And this uh, first one that we're looking at today, Psalm 50, is not a psalm of David, but a psalm of Asaph, uh, another musician, another person that we have uh, several psalms by in the Psalter. And so the first uh, 15 verses of this psalm are really addressed to the righteous one. And, and your, your Bible might have a heading, something like mine, that says God himself is judge. Now, again, that's just something Bible editors have added, but it gives us the big idea of what's happening in this psalm. Uh, so God is, uh, the psalmist is speaking of the righteous to the righteous here in these uh, first 15 verses. In verse six, we, uh, verse five, excuse me, we see that uh, God says, gather to me my faithful ones and, uh, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And so we understand that this is pointing back to uh, Exodus and, and the covenant with God at, at Mount Sinai. And so uh, God is, is calling those faithful ones together. Uh, but we understand that they're not always, uh, uh, they're not always faithful. They don't always uh, do as they should. But even the heavens uh, declare, creation declares God's righteousness, that God is judge verse 6 tells us. And so uh, we see, uh, keep going in verse 8, uh, the psalmist says, uh, not for your sacrifices, he's speaking, quoting God, speaking on behalf of God, not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Uh, your burnt offerings are continually before me. So they're, they're doing the right things. They're, they're keeping the law in this way, but what, are they, what do they really need to be doing? They need to trust God. Verse 15 tells us, uh, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. So uh, we're seeing that God is judge and the righteous are to trust God. Uh, that's the, the message of those first 15 verses. But then the attention shifts in the last verses, verses 16 through 23, uh, from the righteous to the wicked. But to the wicked, God says, verse 16, what right have you to recite my statutes or to take my covenant with your lips? He's saying, why are you doing all of these sorts of things you're doing? You're, you're sinning with your mouth, with your actions, your attitude. And it, it comes to a climax in verse at verses 22 and 23, mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. The one who orders his way rightly, I will show salvation, the salvation of God. And so the, the unrighteous, the wicked, they might try to do the religious things. They might try to say the right things, uh, but that's not what they're supposed to do. God says uh, the one who has a grateful heart, the one who orders his way rightly, uh, which is ultimately to trust Christ, then they will receive that salvation. Uh, but as we look at Psalm 53, a bit of a, a shorter psalm, it is a psalm of David. And it begins with a famous verse, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, and we see that uh, the people here that uh, David is referring to, people who disobey and uh, they disobey God's laws, they oppress God's people. And because of this, they're acting as if God will never judge them, as if God will never punish them. And so they're saying in their heart when they act this way that there is no God. Uh, but we do see verse 5 that God indeed actually finds out and he acts. It says God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. God will bring about justice to all who disobey. Even if they act in their heart as if there is no God, there is a God and he will judge justly. And uh, again, as we've seen with the Psalms, uh, they come to a, usually to a resolution of, of our hope and faith and trust being in God. Verse 6 says, Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, let Jacob rejoice and let Israel be glad. So that Psalm again ends uh, with hope in God. Then we look at, at Psalm 55, another Psalm of David. And uh, we hear that David uh, begins verses 1 and 2. He, he says, Give ear to my heart, O God. Hide not yourself for, from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. He begins with this, this trust, this, this cry to God for help. Uh, but then he has several verses where he's uh, crying out in anguish. Uh, we see that, verse 4, my heart is in anguish within me. Uh, and we go on, we see that David is tortured. He's, he's uh, in a very difficult time. But why is it? Verse 12 says, well, it's not an enemy. That's the problem. It's not an adversary who is doing these things. Verse 13, it is a friend. It is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. And David talks about how 
he would walk with his friend in, in the temple among God's people. This was a close, trusted friend who had betrayed him. And so David is crying out, uh, ultimately saying he, he should cast his burdens on the Lord. And that's what he says in verse 20, 22. Uh, and again, his attitude has shifted by the time the psalm has come to an end. God can handle all that we have to say to him, but the psalms set this example for us that our hope, our resolution uh, should be in God. And so uh, verse 22, he's speaking to others, essentially saying, imitate me, cast your burdens on the Lord as I have. He will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. Even if you've experienced the deepest of sorrows, the greatest of betrayals like David, David's word to us, God's word to us is to trust in God. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.